This is KGW News at Sunrise. Good morning. Thanks for getting up with us on this Saturday morning. I'm Tim Gordon. This morning on Sunrise, witnesses run out of the way as an accused shoplifter tries to flee. How he was caught before putting more people in danger. Plus, a big warning for drivers why the rain could make for much longer delays over, going over the I-5 bridge. But before we get to all that, let's check in with Chris. I wonder Sorry. if that has anything to do with all the rain that we've been getting lately. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> record daily rainfall yesterday. PDX picked up 1.4 inches of rain yesterday, more than double the old record daily rainfall for June 10th. Today, of course, June 11th, and I'm happy to share with you this morning that the rain for now has ended here in the Portland metro area, and the heaviest of the rain now is down into portions of uh, Lynn and Lane County, which is a couple of sprinkles right now across the Cascade foothills. Hopping across the Cascades, we've got some showers across central Oregon and parts of the Columbia Basin are still seeing some light rain sprinkles right now. Here's what it looks like outside from our Rose City Sky camera. The sky looks somewhat threatening, but uh, not much in the way of any rain falling from beneath that cloud deck right now. It's 59 last check at PDX elsewhere, 57 in Beaverton, 57 King City, and the big picture here across the state right now. Pendleton checking in with 59. Pretty mild day uh, to start statewide. So here's the plan for our Saturday. Big plans, of course, for the Grand Floral Parade in Portland, and I am happy to share with you that I think the parade will be dry. As we go to the afternoon, there is a chance for some showers redeveloping uh, with daytime highs inching into the 70s. Tim, I'll walk you through that and look ahead to Sunday and the week ahead in just a few minutes. All right, Chris, thanks a lot. And check this out also. It could be weather related. A tree crashed down on a home in northwest Portland. It ripped right through a corner of the house there near the St. John's Bridge. Also took down some power lines. ODOT says that meant Highway 30, which runs nearby, was closed for about an hour and a half while crews worked to remove the debris. All lanes reopened around 9 o'clock last night. No word if anyone was hurt in that. Well, more rain in our region means more bridge lifts. And for the interstate bridge, not only will those lifts be more frequent, they'll also be longer. Catherine Cook explains. All our rain has caused water levels on the Columbia River to rise. That means less clearance room for boats and faster water. By next week, ODOT expects the river to rise above 15 feet. For perspective, flood stage in that area is 16 feet. Typically, the river runs around 6 feet. Boat traffic will need time to get through the faster waters carefully. That means drivers should expect bridge lifts to take up to 20 minutes. Also, more boats will need to aim for the lift span, which has the most clearance room. That means more congestion in that area of the water, hence the need for more lifts. Maritime law gives marine traffic priority over highway traffic on the I-5 bridge. The exception comes during morning and evening rush hours. Bridge lifts aren't allowed between 6.30 and 9 a.m. and 2.30 and 6 p.m. In North Portland, Catherine Cook, KGW News. And in Vancouver, Peace Health Southwest Medical Center is asking patients with non-emergency health issues to avoid using their emergency room. That's because they say they're seeing what they call an unprecedented increase in patients and overall hospital admissions with not enough staff to cover them all. The hospital suggests those seeking help again for non-emergency reasons visit an urgent care clinic instead or their primary care doctor. Well, this video right behind me is stunning. Take a look at this. A suspected thief wound up crashing into the front of a store and those harrowing moments played out when witnesses thought they could stop him from getting away. Alma McCarty talked to some people who watched it all unfold. This is what the Gateway Center in Northeast Portland looked like Friday night. Windows of a vacant storefront boarded up because of this. Next thing you know, I hear my staff just going crazy. <laughs> he pulled up over on the other end. He zoomed through, missed our windows by an inch and uh, just scooted in right on in there. Robert Powers. Everybody was out here. Uh, we were witnessing it. And JC Banco. The customer I was working with was like, Oh, that guy's stealing something. I was like, oh yeah, that's normal. People are always stealing stuff from Ross. Both work yeah. at the T-Mobile next door. Then we saw someone drive up behind his car and kind of stop him from backing up. 
Unable to back up, the driver decided instead <laughs> to go up onto the sidewalk, eventually crashing through those windows. Then he got out and ran. Officers say he jumped on a bus. Turns out it wasn't in service, and that's when they caught up with him. Portland police identified the man as Nigel Davis. They say he shoplifted from Ross, then tried to get away in a stolen car. I guess Ross has free clothes because people just can go in there and do whatever they want to do. Court records reveal a long rap sheet dating back to the mid-90s. He pled guilty to a similar crime back in 2020. Being a man with nothing to lose would be indicative of somebody driving through a, a commercial sidewalk and straight into a building. Both Robert and JC tell me some employees are still shaken up, though they say this shopping center sees its fair share of crime. It could have been just another typical day if that person got away, but now we got the news here and we got destroyed property and we got some pretty shaken up people. My coworker almost got hit. At the end of the day, it was an empty building, so glass can be repaired, lives uh, that are lost can't. Well, despite that close call you see in the video there, Nobody was hurt. The suspect remains behind bars at the Multnomah County Detention Center. Well, Portland police are looking for a man, they say, tried to kidnap a jogger at gunpoint. This happened a little before 4.30 Thursday morning, very early then, near Southeast 70th and Woodward Street. A 42-year-old woman told police during her morning run, a man drove beside her, took out a gun, and demanded that she get in his car. Uh, here's a description. He's a black man, 30 to 40 years old, with a close trimmed beard who was possibly wearing glasses. He was driving an older light green Subaru Outback. If you have information on what happened, please call police. Well, we are getting a glimpse at how local law enforcement is taking on violence. Multnomah County Sheriff's deputies, along with some agency partners, are now doing what they're calling special focused missions. And as Mike Benner reports, the sheriff says they're getting results. The car's not familiar, but... This is video obtained from the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office. It shows deputies conducting overnight missions in neighborhoods where gun violence and traffic fatalities overlap. We're just one part of the solution, but an important part. Multnomah County Sheriff Mike Reese is the driving force behind what are called Enhanced Public Safety Initiative missions, the latest happening just this week. Deputies and officers from partnering agencies made 51 traffic stops. They arrested eight people, recovered two stolen cars, and seized one gun along the way. Gun violence and traffic uh, fatalities need police officers to be proactive, and our deputies are doing that. Since the first mission back in mid-April, deputies have made more than 100 traffic stops and arrested nearly three dozen people, all while recovering seven stolen vehicles. Uh, I'm, I'm glad they're, they're actually Try to focus on making it safer out here, and we're thankful for that, you know. This man lives near 162nd in Burnside, the area of the latest mission. He and his neighbors appreciate the extra police presence because they'll tell you it's not uncommon to hear gunfire. Uh, it's got to be at least like every night, multiple times a night. And see reckless driving that includes speeding. A lot of people seem to have forgotten that they're driving a thousand plus pound vehicles going speeds that man isn't naturally supposed to go. Ending that sort of thing is just one of the goals of the Enhanced Public Safety Initiative mission that Sheriff Reese says we can expect to see a lot more of throughout the summer months. And if our deputies aren't proactive in, in their abilities and their work, then we're missing uh, a key component of keeping our community safe. All right, thank you. You have a good night. And the sheriff adds a couple of things that are also key, ensuring people who are prohibited from having firearms actually surrender them, along with more resources for specialty teams focused on taking down criminal organizations. Well, if you need to do business at the Oregon DMV, check the hours at your local office. Coming up next, we'll look at the staffing shortages that will mean changes across the state this summer.